Alaska Crafty Gal Victoria here. I was sitting here taking apart all these strips. I found this bag of strips at a junk shop for like two bucks. Something like that. But I wanted to rescue it. I, I had the need to rescue this fabric. So I brought it home and I want to show you what I make with it. Challenging my own self to make something really cute with this. I mean, the pattern is really cute. It was really wrinkled. It was all shoved into a big gallon Ziploc bag. And my creative process in my mind was like, I can totally make something really, really cute with that. So I'm going to show you what I do with these. Stay tuned. So this is the stage I'm at now. I've taken my seam ripper and I'm separating the blocks from the rows. So here's my pile of separated blocks. And then I'm taking the blocks and separating each section. And I wind up with piles like this. Some of you might ask why I'm not just keeping the blocks as is or why I'm not using the strips as they are once I iron them out. Well, the main reason being, if you can see here, the person didn't, whoever had this, they didn't do super consistent seam allowances, which is fine. Nothing wrong with wonky. Like this particular strip here, it looks pretty darn good, right? Just trim it up and use it. Well, not all of them are that way. And the idea I have to turn this into something else, maybe I don't want this color order. So that's my process. I know you guys are gonna probably think I'm nuts for sitting here wasting all this time with my seam ripper and picking out these seams, but it goes actually relatively quick. I'm just folding this over just because it gives me a more consistent grip. Picking out these seams real quick. I'm just doing every other one. every third, every fifth, whatever, and picking it apart. I mean, look at it, it goes pretty quick. It's not a big deal. So it's not like I'm wasting that much time to do it. So at this stage in the game, this is where I'm at. Once I'm done, I'm gonna trim off all the, uh, of course, clean it up, iron it, trim, trim off all these extra thready bits all over, and sort them into piles of colors. Stay tuned. So as you can see, I'm going to do this whole strip here and pull apart all these seams. As you can see, as I just showed you, it's pretty quick. It goes pretty fast. And um, yeah, it, it feels good to know that I'm going to be turning something. As you can see, I'm struggling here. Um, but it, it goes pretty fast. And it, it does my heart good to know that I will be turning something that somebody thought of as junk or they didn't want into something beautiful. See, quick and easy. So as you can see, I've got my piles here. I've been diligently working away and I've got all these piles. I've got my iron, I've got it set to the cotton setting and no steam. And I'm going to give all of these little bits a nice, good press. So I'm just gonna lay out some pieces um, a little bit at a time and just give them a nice press so that they come out crisp and I'm able to trim them up here in just a little bit. So anyway, I'm going to continue ironing all of these pieces as you can see behind my iron there on top of my sewing machine. Once I iron them, I'm just putting them in little piles according to color and once I get them all done, I can start on the next phase of the process in my mind on what I want to do with these. I think you're going to like it. So like I said, I'm just going to sit here and iron these out and finish up 
the pile here I've got. And I'll see you here shortly. This is all I have left right here. So here we go. So now I've got all those trimmed up. I'm going to put my pieces right side together and I'm going to start string piecing. Now you can use pins if you'd like. You can also use um, those clover clips or clips or whatever clips you have. I think I'm going to use pins this time just because I can get them a little bit closer to the needle under that presser foot where you can't do that with the clips. And I'm just going to send these through one right after the other chain piecing. Um, I really want a super accurate quarter inch seam. I am setting my needle position all the way to the right because on my machine for piecing, that's where I like it and where my quarter inch mark is. And I'm just going to send these through one right after the other chain piecing right sides together send the next one through right sides together send the next one through now i may be starting off with pins but that doesn't mean i'm going to continue using pins i go back and forth all the time with the pinning thing it's one little extra step but i i know for a fact that it definitely keeps my seams super accurate when i do pin these pieces are short enough i don't know if i'll continue using them I think I'm pretty comfortable with my quarter inch seam and accuracy that I can just send them in one right after the other. Hopefully this is a better angle for you, but I'm just going to continue chain piecing all of these bits together. I just wanted a little bit of a better angle for you guys. I know that most of you that sew know what chain piecing is, so I'm just going to finish up doing this here and then once I get all of the chain piecing done i'm going to be snipping all of the string in between the thread string but i'm going to go ahead and pull this off here i'm going to clip all of the thread in between each and every one of these and just quickly it's a snip 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 cut all these threads and then i'm going to finger press these open just like this I'm going to finger press these open I'm not stretching the fabric I just want to give it a nice crisp press I eventually will wind up opening that seam with my iron instead of leaving it to one side because it was creating too much bulk so I'm just going to give it a nice finger press and then once I get the parts pressed open that I want I'll start sewing these two patches together and continuing on with the process of sewing. So let me continue doing this and I'll be back. So now that I've got all of the fabric strips sewn together in the order that I want and the size that I want, I've decided to press the seams open. See, to me, it just made it less bulky. You don't want to be dragging your iron across. You just want to separate the seam and press firmly each of these seams open. I originally had them all to one side and to me, it just was too much bulk for what I am making with it. So I'm just going to go ahead and open all of these seams up, give it a good press. I want these seams nice and flat as can be. And once I'm done doing the back of all the seams on both strips, 
I'm going to flip it over and give it a good press from the front as well. Look at that nice, flat, perfect seams. I've trimmed it up on either side and I love it. So now I'm going to be ironing on my interfacing onto these fabric strips. This is my go-to interfacing lightweight. That's the Palon P44F. I use this on a lot of my piecing work just because it gives it a little bit more strength and durability. So I'm going to go ahead and fuse this onto my fabric strips that I've sewn together here. Um, I've already cut it to size. So now I've got all of the interfacing and look how much more durable and secure this fabric strip is. I'm going to now trim off the excess and square these up so that they're the same size. I'm going to go ahead and cut off the extra overhang of the interfacing. Now you can use a scissor or a rotary cutter. I prefer to use a rotary cutter for this part just to make everything nice and tidy and straightened up. And I'm going to go around all the sides and get rid of this excess, the excess threads, the excess interfacing. And I'm just going to go ahead and square these all up. They're so much better. Nice and tidy and all squared up. Now I've already cut these two pieces for what I'm going to be making. They measure, this is one piece for the bottom, four inches by eight inches. So I have two of those. And then I cut two pieces that were two inches by eight inches. And this is what I'll be using for the project that I'll be making. I cut some of these in advance. So I cut several sets in the same dimensions. And then I also cut some in smaller dimensions. So I'm going to lay it like this. This is going to be the center. This is going to be the top piece and this is going to be the bottom piece. And I'm going to sew these all together. So here are the two pieces that I've got cut down and ready to go. And I've cut two pieces of interfacing, uh, fusible interfacing that are the same size as the piecing that I have in the background there. And the type of fusible fleece that I use is this, I get it at Joann's and it is the Palon 987F. And I find that it's just a really nice durable, fusible interfacing, and I don't have to worry about basting. So what I'm doing now with the glue side up on my fusible interfacing, I'm laying down the four by eight size piece onto the tacky side, the gluey side, and I'm just pressing down according to manufacturer recommendations on adhering this fusible fleece to your project. I lined everything up, making sure that no glue would be touching my iron, and I decided to use the smaller iron for this because I feel like I just have more control and can see what I'm doing better than that big chunky iron. And then what I'll be doing is taking the stripey section, the part that I pieced with the lightweight interfacing behind it, I'm going to be laying that on top and stitching that down. So that's next. That's what you see me doing here, right sides together on both of them. And I'm just lining up everything nice and straight. And I am going to pin this together so that everything stays exactly where I want it to stay. And this portion is kind of like a quilt as you go. I'm going to be sewing right onto the fusible fleece now that I've got that bottom piece secure. I'm going to just pin this on here, make sure everything is lined up nice and straight. And then I'm just gonna sew another quarter inch seam all along this side here on both of these pieces.
Now, once I've got those attached, I'm just clipping the string in between, finger pressing really well this seam here between the stripey middle section and that bottom section. Notice I'm not pulling, stretching, anything. I'm just pushing down really well on that seam. I'm gonna get my little iron pad out and I'm going to press this down nice and secure to that fusible fleece. So I'm just gonna go ahead and work on this and continue to press this middle section down, making sure everything is lined up and I'm not stretching or pulling this fabric in any direction, just back and forth, back and forth. And I'm gonna do this to both of my pieces and then we are going to be adding the two inch by eight inch portion of fabric that we cut to the top and doing the same thing. So this is all nice and adhered down, as you can see, and I'm adding that two inch by eight inch piece to the top of the striped section. And I'm just gonna pin this down, making sure everything is lined up nice and straight. I'm putting them side by side because I want once I had put this all together, I want everything to line up nicely like, as if it's one solid piece. So I'm just gonna line these up really nice. I'm gonna pin them and do the same step again. Pin it all, sew it one right after the other, and I'll be back. <laughs> As you can see, I am done sewing that top portion on and I'm just gonna do the same as I did before. Give that seam a nice, good finger press. I do have some extra fusible fleece up top, but um, that's going to happen. I'm just gonna press this down, make sure it's nice and adhere and really strong. And then I am going to square these blocks up, trim them down, get that extra fusible fleece cut off and just make sure everything lines up perfect. Now that all these sections are adhered nice and securely, I'm going to do some straight stitching across both of these panels. Here you can see all my quilting lines across both of my panels. I did about four or five rows on the bottom section and I think three or so on the top section. And it's nothing fancy, just straight line stitching. I just wanted to have it have that quilted look, plus it makes it more sturdy and durable. And I think it just looks nice on a smaller bag or a smaller pouch to have that straight line stitching. Now I'm gonna prep my zipper. This is a nine inch zipper. I'm gonna put the zipper tabs on the end of this. I, um, I have two two inch by two inch zipper uh, squares. I'm going to fold it in half, I gave it a press, and then I folded one side in half again and gave it a press. And these will attach to the zipper and flip over. You'll see here in a minute just exactly how this is going to work. I also have this two inch by two inch square. I have it folded right sides together and it's going to be the little tab on the side of the bag. So with a quarter inch seam, we're just gonna sew this right down the side with a little back stitch to keep it in place. And then I have this turning tool that I got at Walmart. It's got this sharp little tip on the end. I'm just going to flip this right side out and give it a nice press. It's real easy to use. You just insert it and that little hook grabs onto the end and you just pull it through. 
Of course, I say it's easy to use and then I struggle with it a little bit, but you just got to finagle with it a little bit and then you can get it right side out. See, easy peasy. And I'm going to give it a nice press. So now I'm getting ready to prep my zipper. I'm lining my zipper up, making sure it's long enough. And I'm looking at these. I'm going to make some quarter inch markings on my bag here. And then I'll also be marking the zipper because we don't want to be sewing over all that bulk to make these tabs. I'm just going to use a permanent marker. I don't have any other pen. So I'm just lining up my ruler here and I'm going to put some marks at the quarter inch in from either side. I'm just going to use my ruler so it's nice and straight. And I'm just making a very tiny mark on both sides of the bag because I want that zipper tab to be just inside the quarter inch mark that I'm marking on the bag here. And then I'm going to line up my zipper and I'm going to make a mark right across at the same spot on the zipper. Here you can see the markings on the quarter inch inside each edge of the bag. It's really faint, it's really light, it's barely visible. And it's gonna be covered up with your seam allowance anyway. And here's the marking on the zipper. You're gonna get your scissor and you're gonna cut off that excess. You're gonna cut right at that line and cut off that excess. You don't need it. It's just bulk and extra and it's gonna interfere, obviously, so you don't need it. And then you're gonna get the two inch by two inch square that you've already have ready. Not the side that's double folded into the center, but the other side that you didn't fold in again, you're gonna put it right side to the edge of the zipper and you're gonna sew about a quarter inch down right there you're going to sew about a quarter inch down from the edge but wait before you do that before you sew this line wait and sew the zipper stop so i'm just placing my zipper under the foot and i'm going to go back and forth and back and forth a couple times like three or four i really want a nice secure zipper stop on my zipper so i'm just going to do this back and forth and back and forth a couple times and I'll show you here in a minute what that's going to look like. I think I did it about four or five times. And then I'm going to pull it off of here, trim my threads, get all the little thready bits off. And it winds up looking really nice. It makes a nice sturdy zipper stop. I just don't want any of these getting caught up in the teeth. See, it's about a quarter inch down. Now we're going to attach the zipper tab. You're gonna put it with the right side facing the zipper and sew about a quarter inch down from the edge there. You're gonna just go straight across, sew a nice quarter inch seam all the way across, and then go carefully over those teeth, hand crank it if you need to. Take it off, trim your threads, and you're going to fold it up over itself. See, nice quarter inch seam right about that zipper tab, fold it up over the edge, fold it that quarter inch side down, and fold it over itself. Quarter inch seam, show you again, fold it over, fold it over again, and top stitch all the way across, securing it to the zipper now on both sides. And once you get this seam done, what you're going to do you can backstitch if you want, but it seems completely unnecessary because you're going to be trimming off these ends anyway. I'm just going to trim off my excess threads here, and then I'm going to get my big scissor and trim off just a little bit beyond the zipper tape on either side. And see? Now we're going to do the same thing to the other side. So now I just lined it up. I've marked my line. But the most important thing to note here is before you cut this, unzip your zipper. Ask me how I know. Unzip it and then cut that off and repeat the same procedure on this side of the zipper as you did the other side. Now your zipper should look something like this. Here it is with both tabs attached to both ends of the zipper. Now here comes the fun part, assembling the bag. We're going to attach this zipper. I call this the tongue of the zipper. You're going to lay that tongue on the outside of the bag. So that tongue will be touching the outside of the bag just inside those two marks that you made. And I'm going to pin the heck out of it because my zippers tend to slip a lot. I like to use a clip down where the tongue of the zipper is. 
I'm just going to pin the heck out of this, making sure those two tab marks are just inside that quarter inch marking I made on the bag. And I'm going to take my lining piece and I'm going to lay that right sides facing each other. And I'm going to sew about a quarter inch mark all the way down the side of the bag. Now you can use a zipper foot if you'd like. Um, I choose not to at this stage. I um, can do it without using my zipper foot, but if you want to use your zipper foot and you're more comfortable doing that, do that. So I'm just putting these right sides together with the zipper tongue facing the outside of the bag and right sides of fabric facing together. And I'm just going to sew a nice quarter inch seam all the way down the bag. As you can see, I use loads of pins. I don't want anything shifting or moving around while I do this. And I like to use a clover clip where the, where the bump of the tongue is, only because as I'm sewing and if I'm making two or three at a time, I will know that I need to do a start-stop stitch. So here's my last pin. I like to insert that on the quarter inch seam on the outside of that tab. And like I said, just sewing a quarter inch seam all the way down. Now with your needle in the down position, lift up your presser foot and finagle that tongue of the zipper and zipper past where you're sewing. That makes it so much easier. You just put it back in place, lower your presser foot and continue sewing and to finish up your quarter inch seam. And I'm gonna do a little backspace real quick and then um, it just makes it so much easier without you having to remove your project. Here's the project all done with my quarter inch seam. Now I'm just going to flip this over, nice zipper nestled in between, and I'm gonna give it a nice press from either side and do the other side. But before I do the other side um, and attach it to the zipper here, I'm gonna give it a nice top stitch. I'm gonna to top stitch it just, I don't know, between an eighth and a quarter inch from the zipper Give it a nice top stitch. It'll blend everything together with those quilting lines. And then we will attach the other side of the bag to the zipper. It just looks nice. And it holds the lining in place so it doesn't get caught up in your zipper when you're opening and shutting. So now we're going to lay right sides together, lining it up, making sure everything is nice and square. And we just wanna make sure everything lines up perfectly. So I know it's gonna sound weird, but you're gonna lay your lining piece wrong side together with the, with the outside bag piece. So when you open it up, it looks like this and the lining pieces match internally together. Now it's all attached. As you can see, we've got the two outside pieces, the zipper in between. You've got that little gap, as you can see where we left the markings. And then on the inside, that's totally normal. Don't freak out when you see that. That's totally normal. And then on the inside, as you can see, we've got the two lining pieces. Everything is nice and attached, and now we're gonna get it all pinned. But before we do this next step, make sure you open your zipper or you won't be able to turn your bag right side out. Here we've got the bag all pinned together. I use loads of pins, but make sure you leave an opening gap here to turn your bag. I like to put two pins in a little like X formation. That just reminds me to leave an opening here. Here's a little bit of a close up. See how I put two pins together like an X? I do that on where I want to start and stop. So we've got the bag all pinned, ready to go. Now we're gonna start here and sew all the way around. And then we get to that first X, we're gonna do a back stitch jump over that gap, do a back stitch, and then go all the way around and finish off with a back stitch here.
now that this is all together, I'm going to box all the corners. I'm going to box every corner. And the way I do that is super simple. I just take my ruler, take my marker. You can use any type of ruler you have. It could be a school ruler. It doesn't have to be a quilting ruler. But I just mark, I want to do mine at a three quarter inch. So that way it makes it an inch and a half boxed corner. So I just take my ruler, I line it up with the three quarter mark, and then I'm gonna mark it over here at the three quarter mark. And I'm literally just gonna take, I'm using a permanent marker. I have um, pens, but I don't know where they are right now. So that's just that. So I'm gonna take my marker, line it up here like this at the three quarter mark on both edges. And I am just going to make my boxed corner. I do it to both sides um, of the outside of the lining bag and the lining piece. So just like that. You can see it just like that. And I'm gonna do this corner, this corner, and this corner. So now I've got all four of my corners marked, as you can see. And I'm just going to cut along that line and cut out these corners. You wanna make sure you have a nice sharp scissor, otherwise it can snaggle your fabric. So I'm just gonna sit here and cut these corners out and then we're gonna box these corners, flip it the right way and we shall be done here very shortly. You can see we've got these corners cut out from both sides, the lining piece, as well as the outside of the bag. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna kinda grab a hold of the bag and pull it apart. We're gonna take these corners. We're going to put one side of the seam to one side and the other side to the other side. And we're gonna line up this side seam with this bottom seam on the inside here. That way, it's all lined up on, on the reverse side. And then we're gonna just stitch this closed. We're just gonna stitch straight across here, a quarter of an inch to close up this gap. We've got these corners all nice and boxed up. I'm gonna trim some of these extra loose threads off of here. But all of them are sewn at a quarter of an inch. And now it's just time to turn this bag right side out. So we use the opening gap here in the bottom of our liner and we're just going to pull this through. give it a nice press and it's where these two were your opening gap I'm just gonna tuck that in we're gonna give that a nice little tuck line it up nice I'm gonna press this nice and flat and then I'm just gonna stitch right there and stitch this closed Here it is all stitched together. I got that gap enclosed in this little tiny seam. 
as close to the edge as possible. I'm just going to tuck the lining in and I will minute, I want to go over to the iron and give this a nice good press. So it's got the nice box corners, all the seams line up, the edge seams line up. It lays nice and flat, but it's got weight in it so that it can stand up on its own. I just love making these little pouches. As you can see, the tabs are exposed, the zipper works just fine, and none of the fabric will get caught up in that zipper. I had noticed the first time I had turned it right side out, there was a little teeny tiny hole that I missed. Apparently the fabric slipped, but I fixed it. Um, there's a small imperfection here, but for the most part, it all lines up pretty nice and I'm happy with it. Yeah, so this is what I've got so far. Hopefully, I will, I still have a lot of these scraps left over. As you can see in this one here, it's got, I used some other scrap material that I had and I combined it with the pink and the neon yellow that was in the original scraps. So I just cut them up to be the same size and added them to this bag. This one that you saw me working on, um, I just took a combination of the scraps and turned it into this style. And then this one here, I liked the idea of the blocks, but I just changed the color order of how they were and I did, you know, one this way, one this way, and one that way. That's why this one's a little bit wider. So that's it guys. This is what I've made out of the scraps so far. Like I said, I've got quite a few scraps left over and um, I will be making a full size project bag, probably some more of these zipper pouches, maybe changing this, this background color of the gray that I used, but I just had so much fun working on these. And I hope you liked this video. All right. All right, guys. Well, that is all I have for you now. It turned out so stinking cute. I just love the little tabs on the zipper instead of having the bag that goes at an angle here. I just thought this was a cute little added. You can, you know, hang it in your suitcase for travel. Um, just anything. I just, it just looks cute to me. I just like the way it looks. And I did the best I could to line up the sides, which I think they lined up. That's why I always put a pin on either side of this seam when I'm sewing panels like this together. I just think it turned out so cute. It's got that inch and a half boxed bottom. It stands up on its own. And this is what I've made so far. I have several more of um, the strips cut, prepped, iron, cleaned up, ready to go to make some more zippered pouches. And I also want to make an actual project bag utilizing some of these. I have a lot of these strips left from the scraps that I rescued. And I hope you enjoyed watching this. Stay tuned. See you next time. Alaska Crafty Gal Victoria here. Bye-bye.